video people know we're ready to go. Olin, are we ready? Great. Good evening. Welcome, everyone. I'm Councilmember Joe, and welcome to the August 9th Mobility and Infrastructure Meeting. I'll call the meeting to order at 6.30. The first thing on the agenda is uh, public comment. And so as per our normal uh, standard, I've got to read that members of the public may address this committee at any time, in person or virtually. Those who signed up in advance to make comments will be called on first. If you're joining us virtually and would like to make comments, please raise your hand. If you're on the phone, that probably requires you to press star three. If you're joined by a computer or a smartphone, look for the hand icon. This varies by device. One option may be, go, may be to go to the participant panel and choose the raise hand icon on the lower right hand corner. If you're in the room and did not sign up, I'll ask for other speakers before closing this portion of the meeting. I'll wait a moment to see if anyone wishes to raise their hand. I see Connie Marsh, you wanna go ahead and come on up to the lectern and identify yourself and you have five minutes. Okay, I'm Connie Marsh and I live up on Squawk and um, my understanding from the agenda is that we also get to speak after the questions of the, of the main thing. So uh, what I wanted to talk about initially is the concept of a pedestrian grid in Flatland Issaquah which Newport Way borders that. And um, we are creating a grid structure in our development, but at this point in time, we haven't really found a way to get people across the street so that they can actually travel distances easily in this grid system. So when I imagine our central Issaquah area, which is somewhat bounded by Newport Way, I expect that we'll actually be able to get across Newport Way along with that same basic 250 foot grid and that it is going to become of our highly, part of our highly mobile system. And we are gonna have businesses potentially along that area that can thrive because it has an extra layer of way of, way of people to get to their businesses, right? So we do have a, a, you're gonna ignore what this is, but this is a development that is a proposed development that shows a sketch of a roundabout um, on Newport Way. And I was sort of fascinated and stunned to see what this might do to impact existing businesses, because it's not very personal when you look at a, a just a configuration of a road. So I brought this little map and I'm gonna fold it over and I wanted to hand that to you before this discussion um, began to sort of give a better three-dimensional glimpse of what life might look like uh, for, for people on Newport Way in the future. Thank you. The map will be marked as Exhibit A. I'll make sure the clerk gets the copy of this. Yes, can Connie, can I have a copy, record? please? Very good. All right, thank you. Any other members of the public present that would like to speak during public comment? Seeing none, I will turn to Deputy Clerk to see if there's anyone online that would like to may comment or might have raised their hand. Uh, Chair Joe, there are no virtual attendees. Very good, thank you. Well, citizen comments are an important part of the public process. We take them seriously and we factor them in the decisions we make. So thank you for uh, attending virtually if you're online and thank you for giving comments tonight. There will be a second opportunity to give public comment after the presentation from staff. And if there are no other uh, individuals that would like to give public comment, we will move on to number three in our agenda, which is the approval of the minutes from July 12th, 2022. Have those been reviewed by the members of the committee? Yes. Yes. All right. Any changes, modifications, clarifications? No. Okay. I'll take a motion then. Motion to approve um, the minutes as posted in tonight's agenda. Second. Okay. Any discussion? 
I'll call the question then. All in favor of adopting the minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? Record reflect it's 3-0, thank you. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda then. Moving right along. Okay, this takes us to agenda item ID 1971197, excuse me, Newport Way, Maple to Sunset Improvements, Corridor Concept. We have Senior Engineer from Public Works, Wang, and also Mr. Mortensen from Transportation Engineering, uh, Transportation Engineering Manager from Public Works. Good evening to you both. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having us here. Thank you for the introduction, Council Member Joe. I'm John Mortensen, Transportation Engineering Manager. I have with me Shua Wang, who is the city's newest senior transportation engineer. She, she is now the project manager for this project. Before she went, joined the city, I was the project manager. And so we're gonna split our presentation and I'm gonna cover the stuff up until she was hired and then she will cover the rest of the material. Tonight, I'm here to talk about the Newport Way Maple to Sunset project. The outline for tonight's item is to talk about the purpose of the item, the direction needed, discuss the project goals and policy impact, a little bit of background about the project will be provided, and then we'll get into what is the final proposed concept for Newport Way between Maple and Sunset, followed by a discussion of the public outreach that was conducted recently and that followed by timing and next steps. The purpose of the item tonight is to seek recommendation from the committee to the city council on the preferred concept. And the direction needed, the administration requests direction from the Mobility and Infrastructure Committee on the final design concept for Newport Way between Maple and Sunset. There are three options. The first option is to concur with the design concept with no additional changes. Recommend that the city council adopt the preferred concept. The second option is to revise the proposed design concept. And then the third option is to delay the project. The project goals and policy impact. As we work to put together this project and come up with our design concept, we really looked at the mobility, as a project design team, we looked at the mobility master plan as well as the climate action plan. <clears throat> and we really, the project's goals are to improve mobility within Issaquah, prepare the city for future growth, better connect Issaquah with the region, promote environmentally sustainable, sustainable mobility, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. High level of what the project is, I have a map here that shows the project. The project is located in yellow. It goes from the intersection of Maple, which is near Target and Trader Joe's, all the way to Sunset with intersections at Holly, Juniper, and Dogwood, and at those three intersections, we're proposing roundabouts. The project also includes a second southbound lane that would go from the intersection of Newport and Maple to 900 feet south of Holly. It would construct curb gutters, sidewalk, landscaping, as well as a separated bicycle lane for the bicycles. A little bit of background on the project, and this is a project that the city has had planned for many, many years, and we're going to do, give you the abbreviated version of the history starting with 2009, because it actually goes much further than that. The city initiated a corridor study and did a lot of community involvement between 2009 and January 2011. At that time, a preferred concept was adopted by the city council. A little more than a year later, the city council adopted the central Issaquah plan. And the two plans both spoke, the Newport Way Maple to Sunset concept that was adopted in January 2011 and the central Issaquah plan 
actually conflicted with what they said should happen on Newport Way, that the January 2011 concept had a second southbound lane, it had the three roundabouts, and the Central Issaquah plan identified Newport Way as a parkway, which said generally we'll have one lane in each direction, although it didn't specifically say it had to. Um, and then it also, oh, I guess I, I got to back up. The 2011 concept, one of the big things that came out of it from the public involvement was not to have a center median, that it was a cost benefit discussion and the community really did not want it. And so it was not in there. And then the Central Esquad plan put the center median back in. Now, Central Esquad boundary includes the part of the project that goes from Maple to Holly. And when I have another exhibit, I'll, I'll show that. Once you get south of Holly, you're outside of Central Esqua, so that no longer applies. Then in 2018, the city got some design funds for the project. And as a project design team, we started trying to think of how can we merge these two adopted sections for Newport Way, the 2011 concept and the Central Esqua Parkway for Newport. And we came up with a, a concept at the time it was, I think, a really good concept for Newport Way, but it was very expensive. So we went back to the drawing board and said, how can we preserve the goals of the project and reduce costs and reduce the footprint of what we would be constructing? And that's how we came up with the concept that we're going to discuss tonight. Uh, this map shows a general overview of the project. We're going to talk about the three different or the four different sections that are color coded. And as I mentioned, I think this is a good time to see that the part that's in Central Esquad goes from Maple to Holly. That's in Central Esquad. And then once you get past, we're outside of Central Esquad. The first section, this is the one that's in the light blue color. And it goes from Maple to towards the south, towards Holly. And on this section, it has the two southbound lanes. And in order to accommodate transit, the outside lanes are 11 feet wide for the extra width for the bus's mirrors. But then in order to keep speeds down, the inside left southbound lane is 10 feet wide because slow, smaller lanes reduce speeds and make it safer for pedestrians and bicycles. The planter strip would then be as a buffer between the travel lanes and the bicycle lanes where a six foot wide protected bicycle lane would be next to a six foot wide sidewalk. The second section, this is the section in red, which goes from Holly south 900 feet. Uh, this is really similar to section one. And the only difference is that on the school side, the sidewalk is eight feet wide instead of six feet wide. And that came as a result of working with the park board and the transportation advisory board. The park board was involved because part of Newport Way is part of the Green Necklace and the Mountains to Sound Greenway Trail. And so we wanted to make sure that the non-motorized facilities would meet the needs. We talked to the park board and the TAB about different concepts for how to arrange the non-motorized facilities. And one of the things that came out was a concern of having the bicycle lanes next to the school kids on the sidewalk. And as to mitigate for that concern, we widen the sidewalk when we're within the vicinity of the school to give extra room for the kids to walk to and from school. The third section is the section in purple, which begins 900 feet south of Holly and goes towards Dogwood, but doesn't quite make it to Dogwood. This is where we have one lane in each direction. On the mountain side, we still have a six foot wide protected bike lane with a sidewalk next to it. On the school side, a six foot wide bike lane and the eight foot wide sidewalk continues. The final section is the section in green, which is just like the section before with the protected bike lane, sidewalk, one lane in each direction, the planter strip, but the sidewalk has gone down to 
six feet from eight feet on the school side with the thought of at this point the school the kids have dispersed enough and they're spread out where we can go back to trying to preserve the footprint of the project and have it narrower at this point I'm going to hand it over to Shoa who's going to talk about the community engagement thank you John <clears throat> before we leave the the map sections just had a couple questions about um, that might have already been discussed in, in uh, work before I came on council so my apologies if you've already answered these these questions um, has there been any discussion with the school district in terms of where they would like to see um, crossings or any crossings across Newport there and a related question are there opportunities to have pedestrians cross at the roundabouts uh, similar to the way we have it set up at 43rd Southeast 43rd and East Lake Sammamish Parkway if you could give us a little uh, background there yeah at this point we haven't had discussions with the school district about the specific locations of the crossings and we haven't worked on the design of the crossings that's something we want to get to for the next steps uh, and then I think the second part of your question was will the roundabouts accommodate pedestrian crossings potentially there like we do at 43rd and yes. East Lake Sammamish yes they, they will have pedestrian crossings and that's one of the once we get past the concept point we really want to dive into a lot of our attention into how to design these crossings that it's really important with roundabouts they can be good or bad for pedestrians depending on the intention and I actually think that roundabout at Southeast 43rd and East Lake Sammamish Parkway is a good example because the original design was not in my opinion adequate for pedestrians and that's why right now we have a construction project improving the crossings and take the lessons learned from those along with other tools that we've been looking at in order to design those crossings but I think especially the one at Holly with it being right at the school that's going to have a lot of thought go into it knowing that it's going to be a crossing for school children okay so potentially right now between West Sunset Way and um, basically maple there's only one designated crossing which is a, a school light which is isn't necessarily up to full standard but it's a light that you can push and cross there and so that's only one crossing in that section but if we look at this project we're going to have three opportunities to cross should it be approved is that yes that's correct okay thank you very much other questions before we leave the the concept of the maps council member Thank you, uh, and I have a feeling that the answer will probably be similar, but um, so I was really pleased to see that uh, there were the 11 foot width for buses, um, but my question is, and is probably something that we need to work with Metro on, but uh, would there, is there any possibility of, um, does the width prohibit, I guess is a better way to put it, uh, bus stops along Newport? It would not prohibit bus stops. That now the the buses would need to stop in the lane that mm -hmm. we wouldn't have room for pull offs or buses but it would allow for bus stops and if in the future metro decided they wanted bus stops we would work with them to put in bus stops where currently we would have planner strip okay Pro to to be determined in yes. the future yes okay um and then uh, just the I, I noticed in the public um, comments, and I know we'll get to this, but um, the two, we have two lanes going southbound, and then we narrow down again to just two lanes going in two different directions, and it seemed like people were very worried about that bottlenecking. Um, uh, so any, any uh, thoughts about, uh, about how that's going to affect traffic going south, especially in the afternoon when people are that's a heavily used uh, route and you know I can imagine them coming in and then it'll just bottleneck just further down the road then so we did a quite a bit of traffic modeling for the southbound traffic and 
I guess there's a couple of things that the project will do and some things that it won't do. It won't solve the Front Street congestion. I think an analogy of Front Street is it's a wall and that this project won't solve the Front Street wall. But what it will do is provide better access to the side streets to promote mobility within Issaquah, mm -hmm. whether it's Dogwood, Holly or Juniper. Mm -hmm. And we also spent a lot of time looking at where to put the merge point of where that southbound lane stops. We looked at a number of options. We said, well, what happens if we just keep it where it's at and we don't extend the southbound lane? And what we found is that would cause problems at the intersection of Newport and Maple. We looked at trying to put it a little bit towards Juniper and that also caused problems. And we, we found that taking it to Holly was the right spot to accommodate future growth. And like I said, it does not solve the existing problem at Front Street. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, even if we didn't, if we extended it all the way to Front Street, I still think we would have congestion from it, um, but this will accommodate the future growth that's coming in the city. And I guess I'll make sure. Did I answer your question? Or yes, you very to? much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you for uh, allowing us to ask those questions. We'll go on to Senior Engineer Wong and uh, her portion of the presentation. Thank you. Good evening, Council Members and members from the communities. Um, my name is Shu Wang. I'm the new transportation engineer for the city since May. So I'm going to cover the uh, communica community engagement part. So in the summer of 2022, the project team conduct a series of community engagement events, including updated project website, online survey, and a virtual open house. The goal of the public outreach is to inform the public about the project timeline, project uh, design concept, but also to get, gather community input and, um, and build relationships. Um, so as we can see, various um, notification tools have been used to promote this project and to communicate community engagement. So you can see the left, there's a, uh, the shows the Facebook page um, to promote the uh, online survey. And to the right, there's uh, um, individual mailed po uh, letters, uh, postcards we send it to the community along Newport Way. And we also um, post our survey to link to the city newsletters, emails, and um, sent flyers. Over 700 people visit our project website since the updates. Um, the website provides a project overview, project timeline, funding, um, final design concept, and um, project history. The website also, um, the, the website itself provides a link to the survey and um, registr registration link to the virtual open house. So during the three, month, uh, three weeks online survey period, 196 people participate in the survey. The survey is also available in Chinese and Spanish. Um, next page shows the survey results we have. Um, the, survey, um, the survey basically tells, um, try to learn from the public about how does the final design concept meet your needs as a quarter user. Um, 66% thinking the overall design is just right to improve connectivity within the community for all users. Seven, uh, seven, 74% think the design provide a comfortable walking distance, uh, walking network and experience for pedestrian. 42% thinking the, think the protected bike lane improvement meets their needs. Um, the driver improvement is slightly lower, but still 60%. 25% thinking the final design concept does not do enough for drivers. The other 13% thinking the final design concept does too much for the drivers. About 55% of survey respondents um, provide comments. The comments are, uh, comments topics are roundabout design, a pedestrian bike uh, facility, second southbound lane safety improve, improvements. The takeaway from the survey is the majority of the survey respondents think the project does the right amount to improve the connectivity, uh, will meet, meet the needs for both motorized and non-motorized users in the, uh, along the Newport, Court, um, Newport Way. And um, on July 13, we host a virtual open house. In the very beginning, we provide a project overview and attendees um, can, uh, are invited to join the breakout session Virtual session, we talk about the project question, uh, citywide questions, and traffic analysis questions. 
the um, some main topics including concern about stormwater ca stormwater capacity, um, second southbound lane merging point, traffic capacity along the corridor, um, bike and pad crossing at the roundabout location, and right of way impact to the adjacent property owners. The um, the virtual open house work as intended to share the project final design concept with the community and also to build relationship, collect feedbacks from the community and also create awareness of the project timeline. Um, for the timing and next step, um, we, we, are, we are planning to bring this topic to the city council in September's meeting and if the council adopt the concept, the project will move to engineering design in the winter of 2022 and the administration will also continue working on the cost saving ideas um, including retaining wall heights and undergrounding the overhead utilities. If you could just hold on for a second, council member, deputy president, excuse me, Hall, do you have a question? Thank you, whichever works for me. Um, so for the, for in terms of next steps, working on these cost saving ideas, which brought down the cost dramatically, I was surprised to see how much it brought it down. But the retaining walls, so that's part of our, our Title 18 update. So that'll be completed uh, in this calendar year. The undergrounding was part of the street standards update, right? What's the timeline for, for that? Ideally, I'd like to have it go parallel with Title 18 for a couple reasons. One of the reasons is part of the Title 18 update requires the street standards to be updated. And so th that's my ideal world. Um, but then it, it could take a little longer on that one, but very similar time rate. But most likely this year. Yes. Okay, thanks. And uh, I had a question just in terms of the, the um, depth of the study, so to speak. Um, it looks like we had 47 people registered for the engagement and 24 people showed up, which is about average for you know, normal community meetings. I was wondering, 82% um, of the people that did the online survey were city residents. Um, I couldn't find how many participants total we had. It's probably in there, but I just couldn't find it. Do you know the total number of uh, people that participated in the online survey? Um, 196 people. 196, okay, thank you. That gives me some good background. Appreciate it. So I'll move on to the last slide that we have. Um, so the direction we needed tonight from the council, from the committee is a direction uh, to move on, uh, to move forward with the project. Uh, the option one is the, uh, the staff recommended option uh, committee concurs with the design concept with no additional changes, recommended co city council to adopt. Option two, revise the final design concept. Option three, delay the project. Thank you. Thank you very much to both of you for that presentation. Uh, we'll start with um, council questions, and then uh, after that we'll go to um, any comments from the public. So. Anyone on the committee have additional questions at, at this point? Okay, Deputy Council President Hall. Thank you. Uh, John, a few um, weeks ago, we had a member of the community write in about um, speed limits within the design of these roundabouts, and I was wondering if you could speak to that for the committee a little bit. Yes. So uh, following the email from the community member, I reached out to the design team and uh, asked what was the roundabout design speed when we had the 2018 concept. And he had said he had, following the WashDOT roundabout design manual, and it ended up coming to about 16 miles per hour. That was the design speed for traffic inside of the roundabout. I'll go ahead and ask a question. I don't know if you'll be able to, to answer it necessarily. Um, when I was a prosecutor for some of the local cities, we used to call roundabouts kind of um, DUI detectors in the sense that when people were impaired, um, they thought the road was straight and will often just run right over 
a roundabout, which would take out their axle or their tires, and then our police could show up on the scene and, and detain the person for DUI. Do you know if there are any sources that would um, give us any statistics on what kind of crashes we have, just in general, not necessarily DUIs alone, but what kind of crashes we have in roundabouts as opposed to keeping the road straight? In other words, what's the kind of the apples to oranges comparison, if you will? Is it really a safety improvement to do a roundabout or is it merely you know, for traffic flow and traffic um, you know, congestion mitigation that, that we're doing this, if, you, if any of you know? Yeah, the research on the modern roundabout says it does two things. One, it reduces the frequency of accidents at the intersection, and the other thing is that the accidents are less severe because they're more likely to be a side swipe or maybe someone tries to enter the roundabout when they should be yielding, but I guess less accidents and safer accidents. Okay, and that's because we're going, we're slowing down to enter those roundabouts Correct. and we're at operating at angles instead of potentially being um, T-boned as we're making a left turn. Is that? Yes, that is correct. Okay, appreciate that. Other questions from committee members? Okay. We'll open it back up for public comment. If there is anyone in the room that would like to make public comment on this project, uh, your opportunity is here. Go ahead, Connie Marsh, step up to the microphone. Okay, Connie Marsh again. And so this is being promoted as a mobility project. So I asked the question of what is the speed limit going to be? And I was told 30, uh, which is why I then asked, well, what's the speed in the roundabout? Because it turns out that the statistics seem to say that pedestrians are much safer when the roundabout speed is between 10 and 15. Now, this is a layman reading the internet, right? So I'm just giving you sort of a scale of what I saw. The slower the cars go, the more likely it is that they will see the pedestrians and they will be able to get through because if you imagine, you know, you're trying to, to drive through a roundabout and you're looking left, the pedestrian's on the right, right? You turn around and there's the pedestrian in front of you that you never saw because of shading or some such issue. So there was a lot of information on that the design of these roundabouts was huge in making them actually pedestrian safe. And um, so I don't, having a roundabout right there by the school and imagining the crossing guards and a roundabout, it sort of blows my mind. I'm not that much of a roundabout fan, but I'm here to tell you the things that I think you need to be cautious about. And that is the access to these two businesses. The one is the karate studio, which from that drawing would be placed right as people are accelerating out of a roundabout. And this is where we got into trouble on East Lake Sammamish Parkway, where you have a bunch of turns with people going into roundabouts distracted and coming out of roundabouts accelerating. The hair salon, who the daughter is, a, you know, the mother of the person who owns it is a friend of mine. And her access looks like it's going to be very limited. She now uses the right of way st for street parking. And so the impacts to her business could be significant. I didn't see any of these people in any of the meetings. And when I have reached out to them today, today they are unaware of the meeting tonight. And neither of them was aware of the survey or the other meeting. They thought it was all information about this development that was coming out simultaneously. So uh, the human impacts to these small businesses that we're actually trying to get people to need to be considered. You are looking at this sort of silhouette and I am concerned that by approving this diagram that will that will just push this road forward and these people will not get their appropriate attention to try to make their lives as best as possible 
And um, I don't understand the process. The process is not outlined that I can see. Um, I don't understand what the community impact inputs will be and how effective they will be if you all just say, hey, this looks good. And I don't know if you can create an envelope that requires this sort of attention to the community they're putting the road in um, so that we actually do get that safety and awareness of the people. The people are sort of worn out and it's hard to engage y'all virtually. So uh, it, it feels like that's missing and these people are my people and they deserve to have great lives, not lives that are heavily impacted by road design. And we've, we've had road design impacts in this town before and it can create ugly scenarios for those people who are gonna have their homes taken, not in this case, but their businesses impacted. And uh, so are roundabouts really that safe? I think you need to make sure that the design is slower. I think that the speed limit should be 25 and I think that you need another crossing further down between Dogwood and Sunset Way to help create that pedestrian grid because if you go down by the fire station, there's no way to get across unless you go, uh, would go up to the roundabout or down to Sunset. So uh, that is my input for the moment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just take notice that uh, for the school zone, they do have to slow down to 20 miles an hour. And um, Mr. Mortensen, will the <clears throat> 20 mile an hour school zone be before the school as we're going southbound? In other words, if we're coming from Target, heading down toward IVE, that first roundabout is there. And if I can envision it, the 20 mile an hour speed limit starts before the positioning of the roundabout in the map. Is that gonna stay the same? Is, have you talked to the, internally about that? The school zone limits won't change, that those are driven by state law and where they start and stop. And am I correct that as I look at it, the school zone for 20 miles an hour starts before the roundabout on Holly? My memory is correct, you are correct. Okay. Um, so if the speed limit is down to 20 and we think the average speed is somewhere in there that we're not gonna see a big difference in the, the kind of conditions that we have for crossing in terms of speed limit, but we do need to think about how we are making pedestrians visible going across there. What have you learned as we've examined the 43rd Street and East Lake Sammamish Parkway design for uh, pedestrian safety and uh, safety, excuse me, and access. Uh, great question. One of the things that we've learned is speed. That traffic was driving through that roundabout too fast, and I, I think it might not have been noticeable at first. But once all the new homes got built on the other side of the, so you'd have the King County Trail on the lake side and then you had the new development started going in what we started noticing internally through the it was before we had c click fix and I, I think it's report of concern that we would get a lot of complaints about those crossings uh, that cars weren't stopping they were going too fast and that so what we did was we narrowed the lanes up and added some different replace the curb, put in the rectangular rapid flashing beacons, and doing that to improve the, the crossing. I would add that some of the things that we're going to look at are whether it makes sense to do the rectangular rapid flashing beacons. I, I think at, at a minimum we would go with the rectangular rapid flashing beacons, but it might even make sense to do a pedestrian signal where there would actually be a red, especially next to the school zone, those are things that we'll evaluate. Does it make sense to do a raised crosswalk instead of having it at level in order to help slow down cars? And those are just a few of the things that we're getting ready to look at for that crossing, those crossings. Great, thank you very much. Councilmember D. Michelle. Uh, I'll just jump in here and say, you know, we have a double um, roundabout down by Sunset Elementary 
on the Westlake, and I know that's not in the city, but uh, that um, roundabout has been operating successfully for quite a long time, 12 years, 13 years, something like that. So I would think when we start the dialogue with the school district that they would be able to share some of the things they've learned about um, safety for students down there. I think that's mostly a school where kids come in on the buses and don't walk to school. I, I imagine they have a few walkers, but not very many. So it may not be exactly appropriate to Issaquah Valley Elementary, but it, uh, at least in terms of the bus traffic going in there, uh, that was another one of my concerns was in the morning and in the afternoon, we're gonna have a lot of school buses going back and forth on that road and going in um, into uh, Issaquah Valley Elementary. But at any rate, I would say, let's look and see how that double roundabout is working there and uh, what kind of safety measures they put in for students there because I, I am not aware of any um, uh, student uh, accidents that have occurred there so thanks yeah if I could just comment I, I had the pleasure of uh, going to the Timberlake neighborhood for national night out on, and uh, uh, was able to talk to a number of the citizens there and they were currently working on a an easement issue that they were um, having with a, a neighbor and they have a fair number of children from that neighborhood that do walk uh, through there and they stay off the main road using this easement and then cross over to sunset so I can't say that it's in the hundreds of students but it certainly is more than um, 10 or 15 perhaps in the 25 area that do use it so it, it has been working as you point out and there are students that do walk to sunset so yeah. as we um, just kind of file that away as a, a fact uh, that we've discovered so to speak as we've done our community outreach um, to the community to the different neighborhoods. Mr. Mortensen, do you have other comments to anything anything that we've talked about thus far? None other than I thought that was a good idea to check in on the other roundabout by the school. I hadn't thought of that. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are still in the public comment period. Um, if there's anyone else in the room that would like to make public comment, now is your opportunity. I'll look to Deputy Clerk to see if there's anyone online that would like to give public comment this evening. Councilmember Joe, uh, we have one attendee, but no virtual hand raised at this time. Okay. With that in mind, we'll go ahead and close the public comment on this topic and move on to uh, council discussion. Would either of you like to start? Um, I'll start by saying thank you to staff. Uh, I'm, this is a long, long-term project, and uh, I thought the summary of the uh, all the things we've gone through was very well done, and I thought the public and community engagement was very well done, and I was pleased to see the number of people that uh, were involved. I love the question about is it just right or too much or too little. Uh, when you see how many people think it's just right, that sort of uh, tells me that this is a project that can go forward with community support. Um, I do support the project, the way the concept as it's been presented. Um, uh, I think you heard my comments. We have, uh, there were people that were worried about the Juniper and Holly roundabout being too close to each other. And again, we've got double roundabouts in many other places in our community and they seem to be working just fine. So I don't think that that worries me. I think safety is always a concern about roundabouts. And so, um, but I think we can go ahead just being sensitive to that uh, concern from the public and especially when it's around an elementary school. Um, let's see. Um, I was, my concern about can we include bus stops because I have a feeling as growth occurs down there that we're going to want some bus stops on Newport. And um, other than that, I the other comment I have is um, approving the concept is a big step forward and then you start getting into the details of, of the plan. So I think approving the concept doesn't mean that we stop talking to the public, doesn't mean that we stop adjusting the the plan as we learn more because that's uh, that's the reason we approve the concept so we can start proving whether or not it's going to work. So 
um, I think that uh, I am ready to approve the concept and uh, then we will learn as we go along what parts of it work and what parts of it we might need to adjust a little bit. I do think that reaching out to the businesses that are along there will be an important part, but I think it's pretty early actually to be doing that and we can, I think we need some more information to share with those businesses before we're ready to have that discussion with them and what mitigations we might be able to offer and so forth. So. Um, I am ready to approve the concept and I really commend staff for the work that you did, especially gathering all the comments from the public, which I read through and uh, they're always very, very interesting and thank you for capturing those. So I think those are my comments. Thank you, Councilmember D. Michelle. Deputy Council President Hall. Sure, thank you. Um, big thank you uh, to the two of you and everyone else who contributed to this effort. Um, it, it was a fantastic memo and lots of great supporting materials that were good to read. Um, and I agree um, with the level of community engagement that's been done so far. I'm very satisfied with that and that there, you know, there's no reason to continue um, doing um, forms of community engagement where that makes sense in the process still. Um, so some thoughts on kind of what I was looking for going into this and then some thoughts on next steps based on our conversation and on public comment um, today. Um, you know, going into this, what I was looking for was that, you know, we have a merged design concept that brings this resolution between the 2011 concept and the Central Isqual Plan concept. So I'm glad to see that, you know, we have a proposal there so that meets that box. Uh, line with our plans and our standards. So definitely the mobility map, I mean, you had several pages in the memo that showed how this was aligned with different goals of the mobility master plan and the climate action plan. I really appreciated that. When I started reading the memo, I got out my copy of the mobility master plan so I could do that. But then I got to that page and was like, why did I do all that work? But anyways, thank you for doing that. So clearly it's aligned with those plans. Um, uh, I was also looking that it would be responsive to community needs and feedback and in a number of ways the concept has changed in response to community needs. So I appreciate seeing that, um, especially with the median and so on and so forth. And also that the design you know, supports our multimodal vision for Newport Way Northwest while also balancing um, uh, roadway improvements for drivers and supporting safety improvements, which um, is for my, forefront uh, in all of this work. Um, so I am too uh, in favor of the current design concept that's here before us. Um, some thoughts uh, that have come up today is that it would be good to get some feedback from the school district on, on where the crossings uh, would end up going. That seems like it's kind of down the line a little bit there. Um, also, maybe I, I also agree that we should have some feedback or communications with businesses um, near where the roundabouts are going to be in the very least, but also all, all along Newport. And I think maybe the earlier the better, especially if we haven't really um, finish the design or the concept of the roundabouts in general, it might be good to get their feedback to help inform that design um, and will help us avoid mistakes that we learned on Southeast 43rd. Um, designing another, you know, important thing to be mindful of is that, you know, we have to design our roundabouts with intention to encourage pedestrian process pedestrian crossings, which you mentioned, John, so I know that's in the forefront of uh, your two brains. Um, and then also with intention of these turnoffs and um, as you enter or exit a roundabout that it's not, you know, discouraging people from actually being able to merge in um, to the road because the roundabout is too close. I thought that was a good point from a public commenter. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I don't think it's necessarily the role for council to approve a design of the roundabout. I think the only reason this is really here is because there was the conflict between the two concepts. So, uh, you know, I, I trust staff to take the feedback here tonight and, you know, work on those designs, um, but not necessarily imagining it coming back to council again, I'm assuming, and I'm seeing some nods from staff. Um, uh, yeah, so with that, those are my comments. I. Uh, agree with approving the concept as um, shown here tonight and thanks again for all your work thank you for those comments <clears throat> i will also um, thank the two of you for a, <clears throat> a fine presentation tonight and please pass on our thanks to the two or three people that helped you put it together an, an army concept is it takes about 10 people behind a person that's on the line 
uh, with a gun or whatever equipment it might be watching uh, the, the DMZ or whatever it might be. And with city employees, I'm sure there are two or three people on your, in your department that helped you prepare this as well. So please pass on our thanks to those individuals. Um, they don't get enough thanks and city workers in general don't get enough thanks. So we want to make sure that um, that is heard loud and clear from this committee. Um, I appreciate the, the presentation tonight. I'm um, excited that there will be more opportunities to cross Newport Way. Um, I live just above the, the salmon hatchery and would love to walk down uh, to the city and go to uh, um, you know the Confluence Park if I could. And you know there's just not a great place to cross if you um, are too far uh, into Newport Way. And I have seen people with their dogs in the morning or people with their kids uh, going to IVE that cross in places they probably shouldn't be crossing just because the length between the crosswalks is too long. So if we can get three more crossings in there that are thought out carefully and have good design, um, you know, I think that's gonna help us, um, you know, if we can take people out of their cars so they're walking their kids to school, you get the reduce community greenhouse gas emissions uh, impact that, that you're talking about. And we're getting better connections in Issaquah if we're able to um, uh, cross Newport and get into the old downtown uh, and other areas that we want to get to. Um, I appreciate the, the fact that you're going to be, as, uh, as Council Member Michelle points out, continuing to uh, improve on the concept and learn as you go to um, keep an open mind about improvements that can be made that will increase safety and as you have your conversations with the school district and other community members, uh, I think that's going to help make this project uh, even better. Um, I would encourage the administration to uh, think about ways that might be appropriate to showcase this project in the sense if there is a, um, a community activity going on um, and it might be appropriate to put up a, a board just so the community knows that this project is coming. Um, people from other areas of the city, when they come to the party, the festival, the concerts on the green, whatever it might be, will also have an opportunity to just take a look at it. And you know, if there's contact information on there, they can reach out to the city if they have questions. But I think the more people uh, see the the design and and have an opportunity to think about it, it's going to make it an even a better project. So those are my comments. I also am in favor of moving forward with this concept back to council um, at this time. Any questions, additional information that the administration or staff needs from this committee? Okay. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So on the other committee I serve on, Councilmember Ray is always asking, are we putting this on the regular agenda or are we putting this on the consent agenda? Yeah, I, I do believe this should be on the regular agenda as it will be an, a topic of interest to the entire council, I think, and there'll probably be some questions and having the opportunity to hear from professional staff on, on the presentation, I think would be beneficial. Okay. And we don't need any official vote coming out of this committee, okay. They don't. Okay. It's just a consensus, recommendation. Consensus yeah. of uh, recommendation by consensus is uh, is adequate. Okay. To put it on the calendar. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you both for that presentation, and uh, we'll move on to announce. Oh, actually, last thing before we go, um, Exhibit A will be accepted and part of the official record unless there's objection from the body. Okay. Please add that to the record. Okay, good. All right, now we're on to announcements. Any announcements? Okay. Very good. We'll then go to adjournment. Unless there's objection, we will adjourn at 7.24 p.m. We're out of here. Thank you.